Hey you, yeah you who clicked on this video, thanks for giving our channel a shot. And if you will, please do us the honor of watching the video all the way through. Appreciate it. Now on to the video. Hello fellow 8-Bit heroes, it's been a while. Had some life things, some quality issues that we needed to iron out so that we could make a better product for you guys. And now we are back at it and I am so happy to be back with you. So with that being said, what are we looking at today? Well, today's video is going to be one of you guys favorite if you've been a long time subscriber of the channel, and that is the top five non woke series of quarter three of 2023. Now for all of you new people, the way that this works is if there is a new series and by new, I mean on its first season that has premiered between the months of July and September, then we will consider it if it does not uh, display the characteristics of wokeness, i.e. Uh, the identity politics of the day, the woke propaganda of the day, or any other corporate messaging that gets in the way of your escapism inter and entertainment, because that is all you are really there to do when you are watching a TV series, playing a video game, or watching a movie, is escape for a few hours and just enjoy the story at hand. Nobody wants to be preached at, nobody wants to be lectured to, and more importantly, that is not what you are paying the subscription fees for. So with that being said, we watch all of the crap shows so that you don't have to. And then we compile these lists so that you have a good amount of things to watch without having to filter through a bunch of crap. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first series on our list is the irrational. So at number five, again, the irrational. Now this series premiered on Peacock on September 25th. And The Irrational is an American crime drama television series created by Arika Mittman, and it stars Jesse L. Martin. You might remember him as Detective Joe West in The Flash. He was also in Law & Order for a number of seasons. The Irrational is based on a 2008 nonfiction book, Predictably Irrational, The Hidden Forces That Shape Our Decisions by Dan Arley. The show centers on Alec Mercer, a world-renowned professor of behavioral psychology with a unique insight into human nature. Mercer lends his expertise to an array of high stakes cases involving governments, corporations, and law enforcement. However, he meets his match in a female domestic terror suspect who turns his world upside down. Now, what makes this series really cool? Not only is uh, the fact that I really like Jesse L. Martin, uh, I, I kind of didn't really notice him in not law and order like i knew he was there but nothing that he did really stood out to me but watching him especially in the first three seasons of the flash like you know guys you know me you know i'm not cool about the race swap characters uh you know iris west joe west the west family uh, especially in the comic books they are not and i do repeat not of uh black descent however that had been changed in the flash series and jesse l martin helped me get over this in a way it still bothers me that characters are race swap because again i do believe that there are enough uh fictional black characters of a diverse background to where you don't have to take from uh from other characters existing plot lines storylines and heritage but i digress jesse l martin is fantastic in this role just like he's in uh fantastic as joe west in the flash uh he definitely plays alec mercer very well in this series and i i really like the idea that they played this very straight so if you watch the series uh you'll know that uh, a lot of the times, especially in procedural crime dramas, something like this, where the a lot of the nuance about a character being a certain race or having a certain affliction or what have you is is lost. Like they just throw that crap right at you like a like a fastball. I'm telling you, you know, you need to know that the person is is black and gay and, and whatever other uh, irrelevant characteristics that don't really make the character interesting and in this they do not uh, lean in that direction they mostly play this straight as a whodunit type mystery series and i really appreciate that if you uh enjoyed the series starring tim roth uh, lie to me from a few years ago you'll definitely enjoy this uh like i say i'm not super uh, I don't really love procedurals like that, but this one really had me like from one episode to the next. I just had to see what happened next. And I really do believe that you guys will enjoy this as well. So tell me what you thought about it. If you get a chance to watch it next, we have number four moving now. Moving is a 2023 South Korean web series directed by Park In Ji. 
It is a Disney Plus original starring Ryu Seung uh, Ryong. I hope I'm saying that name right. If I'm not, I'm trying, guys. I'm really trying to do better with my uh, with my Asian names, considering that a lot of the entertainment currently is coming from that part of the world. So I am going to have to brush up on that and get my pronunciations right, because we do like to do things right here, because we don't want to get blasted in the comments section for saying it wrong, because I know that you guys will hold me accountable, and I appreciate when you do so. So this is based on the eponymous web tune called called uh, by Kang Full. The series is a supernatural drama that deals with three teenage high school students and their parents who discover their superpowers. It premiered on August 9th, 2023. After seven days of availability, it became the most watched Korean original series on Disney Plus, and it is also available globally on Hulu. So this series is really cool, um, not just for uh, the idea that it's not really preaching any type of propaganda of any sort and it's just entertaining, but the the action choreography, the special effects, you can tell that they were able to spend their budget efficiently because the whole time I'm watching this, I'm not thinking about it being cheap or it looking like a television series, but rather it looks like a lot of the, uh, the Korean movies I've seen. Uh, if you like Squid Game, you like things like that, uh, and you like that type of storytelling, you'll definitely enjoy moving because it is a series that number one doesn't take itself so seriously uh, but it also really you know leans into the ideas of uh, what it feels like to have these things happening to you while you're going through puberty so having a, a superpower that is just thrust upon you all while going through the changes that puberty brings and I really enjoy the idea in this series that uh, super powered people, even though they're not known to the public, they're known to the government and the government makes use of them in very clandestine ways, which plays a big part in the plot. So if you're interested in like if you loved shows like Heroes uh, back in the day or you just like superhero drama or you just like science fiction, this is definitely a show to watch. I have not watched the English dub, nor will I, um, but the subtitle version is completely watchable. It's really fun. The characters are really engaging and enjoyable to watch. So I definitely say give moving a try, especially if you're just trying to watch something to take your mind off of things and just enjoy a really good story. Moving again, that is available on Disney Plus and Hulu. So next we have uh, a original net anime and it is called Gamera Rebirth. Now, let me set the table here. So as uh, a young lad growing up in the 90s, I was first introduced to the character of Gamera, who is a kaiju or a giant Japanese monster. Now, all the kids, they loved uh, Godzilla, 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 Godzilla. But me, I loved Gamera. And the reason I loved Gamera, besides the fact that he was a turtle and in the 90s, I loved everything turtles. Uh, thank you, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, for that. But he's also a protector. So in various Godzilla stories, you would see either A, Godzilla, you know, attempting to be a protector or B, just being a rampaging monster that is out of control. But Gamera, his entire premise is to be a protector of mankind. And I really just love that about this character. This anime is really good. It deals with different uh, topics without being heavy handed, like bullying and things like that. But it doesn't do so in a very preachy or heavy handed way. In fact, the entire uh, series uh, goes or it takes place in 1989 and follows uh, three middle school students as they navigate not only their world with the introduction of kaiju, but also uh, they have a mysterious link with the giant turtle monster known as Gamera. If you like that kind of thing, if you like giant monsters, if you like kaiju, if you like anything like that and you like anime, I definitely say give Gamera Rebirth a shot. You will not be disappointed. Now, yes, some of the animation is done in CG, but it's not really that bad. It's available on Netflix. Give it a watch. If you like it, let me know. If you don't, let me know. And, uh, you know, we'll hopefully we'll have something better for you on the next list. Now, let's get into number three. Nope, I'm sorry. We're at number two. And number two is The Continental from the world of John Wick. Now, this is something that I was looking forward to ever since I heard that it was announced. However, 
being that it is 2023 and everybody has the propensity to screw uh, established properties up with the introdu uh, introduction of woke nonsense, I was cautiously optimistic. But I can faithfully report to you guys that the Continental is top notch. I mean, just chef's kiss from the action choreography to the storytelling to the character development. It does not miss a beat. Now, here is the fun part. So this series is actually following Winston and the various other characters from the Continental in, I want to say, the 70s. So uh, the concierge that you remember from the John Wick movies, this is actually a prequel series starring him. And you actually get to see not only him, but all the other characters that you've seen in the Continental. The show stars Mel Gibson uh, also, and he is he steals the show every time I see him in this series. Uh, but like I say, everything about this just screams style, screams action. You can definitely tell that the creators of the John Wick franchise had their hand all up and through here because it is a fantastic series. I mean, I this is a show I might watch the whole first season all over again. That's how good it is. It premiered on September 22nd of 2023 and is available on Peacock. Uh, you're going to hear that a lot, by the way, uh, in this list. Peacock actually has stolen the show for quarter three. And I am so surprised by that, but I'm also very refreshed to see that at least one of the streaming services is taking fans into consideration and cutting out the woke nonsense so that we can get back to the business of watching entertainment for entertainment's sake. So with that being said, let's get to our top spot. Number one is Twisted Metal on Peacock. Now, what is Twisted Metal? Well, Twisted Metal is an American post-apocalyptic action comedy television series developed by Rhett Reese, Paul Warnick, and Michael Jonathan Smith based on the vehicular combat video game franchise of the same name published by Sony Interactive Entertainment of America. The series stars Anthony Mackie, Stephanie Beatrice, Joe Sanoa, that's Samoa Joe uh, for all of my initiated in the wrestling world, Will Arnett, and Thomas Hayden Church. So, in the post-apocalyptic wasteland, John Doe, a talkative milkman with amnesia, is given a mission to traverse the desolate United States to deliver a mysterious package with unknown contents. He faces a life-altering opportunity, but must confront ruthless marauders in deadly and destructive vehicles to secure a chance at a better future. Okay, so let me get into this right now. First and foremost, Anthony Mackie in this series is amazing. He is so funny and he's just, he, he's great. Like I really didn't think much of this show when it was announced, even when I saw the first trailer and I can tell you this show is great. I mean, there are certain haters out there, uh, Angry Joe, uh, that we're not going to mention on this particular platform. But let me assure you, if you just want to turn your brain off and enjoy some entertainment, this is it. None of the filler, none of the woke nonsense, none of the identity politics, oh, just God. straight fun. And I could not be more happy with this particular series. Now, there are a couple moments here and there, but there is so throwaway. They're so inconsequential to the enjoyment that I and other people have had with this series. I am very confident in recommending it to you guys. And I would tell you, give it a watch if you want to laugh. If you have nostalgia for the Twisted Metal video games. If you just want to see something crazy that you really haven't seen in a TV series in a long time. Like vehicular combat of all things. Give Twisted Metal a shot. You will not be disappointed. And let me know what you think. So, guys, that's going to wrap up our list for this week. Let me know what you thought about the uh, series on offer and whether or not you got a chance to check them out and if you like them or not. Leave the comments below and, uh, like again, let us know what you thought. We'll see you on the next one. 8 Bid Heroes out. Peace. If you'd like to give a shout out on the channel, then hit that like button. Maybe share it with a couple of friends. And do us the biggest honor of all and subscribe to the channel so you can join the 8-Bit Hero family. And while you're at it, hit that bell icon so you can be notified when our new videos come out.